Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve Levin endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Ford Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags. Makes great gifts 24-7, 365 for your family, friends, and loved ones. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, hoodies, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also, don't forget to... um. Support us on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who was born and raised in Seattle and the co-founder of Unionly, which is uh, the online payment platform for um for built for unions. And um also he's also um have been with uh, Advo and also uh, Snap Advance as well, too. And um and, and of course you're here to talk about um you know the unique uh, effortless way to collect payments and um He's also uh, going to be talking about uh, with, um, you know, world economy going paperless and uh, check usage, North American and more as well, too. And how to get started, we'll find out in just one minute. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in beautiful um, downtown Seattle, Washington, not too far from the Space Needle and the um, home of the Seattle Kraken. We're just talking hockey for a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Unily.io and the very amazingly multi-talented Scott Herrick. Scott, good morning, good afternoon, yeah. good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, the book, the missing book, sounds sounds great. I'm intrigued. You know, I'm a big uh, movie movie trailer guy. That uh, kind of kind of fired up. You know, so. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, you know something? That's no problem. Just just don't go missing on me, okay? While you look yeah, for four I, strangers, two <laughs> targets, one, yeah. everything else. So. <laughs> I, I will not. No, my, my buddies and I, when we were, uh, you know, right out of college, we were, you know, had a combined net worth of like six bucks, right? And, you know, we used to just messing around. We'd just make up movie trailers, you know. So like the ones you used to see in the late 90s. So sometimes you see them now, but, you know, more so in the, the 90s, and early 2000s, just the real ridiculous movie trailers. The guy, the deep voice. So so I got me fired up. But thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, no problem, especially in the world where we live in with explosions <laughs> by Michael Bay. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's right. And of course, uh, you're born and raised in a uh, beautiful Seattle. You're the co-founder of Unily.io, which is the uh, online Online payment platform built for unions uh, that make uh, collecting online payments effortless and also commit to um, helping organizations raise funds um, that they support and serve. And uh, also, um, you, you, also, you'd be helping with the world economy, check usage, and um, also um, with with the trends of uh, business shifting from, um, you, you know, paper to uh, paperless. You also worked with uh, Avvo and uh, snap uh, advance and more as well mm -hmm. too and of course you've got a great product out there and before we talk about uh, unily.io and more tell us how you first got started scott yeah no absolutely uh so again thanks for, for having me and you know i was telling you just a second ago and anybody my voice sounds a little off excuse that i uh overcoming a cold i got all my covid tests all negative so you know there's a, still our stuff out there unfortunately but uh hopefully it sounds, you know, a little, a little raspy sounds cool, you know, give that illusion, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so we're talking about how uh, I actually grew up in the media world, you know, in the uh, first advent of uh, cable advertising, you know, and I'll never forget, uh, my mom came home one day and she said, hey, uh, to my dad and I, she said, 
uh, there's a competition. No one thinks it's going to work. It's this new channel. It's this 24 hour sports news network. You know, what do you guys think? Do you think that's going to be cool? And we were like, well, yeah, of course now it's ESPN. <laughs> right. But you know, when like cable TV was the, you know, advent of new technology and then, you know, going from that to, uh, to America, to AOL, right. Where it took 15 minutes to get online. It's like, oh man, this is cool. Hey, Hey, I, I can yeah. get off the phone line soon. I need to make a phone call. Beep, beep, beep. Yep. Yep. I mean, one of, one of my favorite things to think back on is that you had to go to Blockbuster to get a CD with hours on the internet. I mean, like, that's just, you know, but I, I think I kind of miss going to Blockbuster. Obviously, that's more just nostalgic. But the fact that you had to go to Blockbuster to get a CD to have like 10 hours of the internet, and that was awesome, obviously. You know, we've, so I think kind of growing up in that, you know, and just seeing that, that time frame of kind of that crossover, right? Mm -hmm. you know, now, I mean, so I have twin younger sisters who, you know, they, I think I got my first Nokia brick when I was like 17 and that was awesome, right? Um, but from, you know, them to then the next generations where you have YouTube where they'd be like, well, wait, cable or TV, why would you sit there and flip through channels? Why would you, <laughs> you don't just get to choose exactly what you want all the time. It's like, well, anyway, you know, so I think thinking of that and just showing that progression is, you know, kind of how I have always seen things go and where you know whether you like it or not it's going to happen right mm -hmm. and especially with the, the city of seattle itself right we were talking just a second ago how the uh you know way seattle would boom and bust was more industrial in the past you, know, you have your boeings your warehousers uh you know and the, a lot of your clothing companies as well microsoft obviously is the first one that still had its ebbs and flows because it was it was you know product obviously they're still around but with it being more industrial that was booms and, and busts it would go up and down now it's the internet, right? Your Amazon, Expedia, Microsoft, uh, Google's moved here. Everyone's moved here. Uh, so it's just, you know, blown up and increased and changed so much. And a lot of people have said, oh, I don't really like that. It's like, well, all right, go tell, you know, Bezos and Google and, and Gates to, to, to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Good so luck, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. So, I mean, and to me, you know, the, the identity of a city, I've always been kind of fascinated by, right, where it's a collective thing. And, you know, obviously there are some pros and cons, but I think with that, I've always kind of seen that, you know, change is inevitable, whether you like it or not. Um, and I think especially with the payments, I mean, you know, I think off the top, the biggest thing that I've noticed that's kind of fascinating is that the, the conversation is always around going cashless. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I wish, but it, it's just paperless, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's all, if you look anywhere on the internet, it's just cashless, cashless. And I'm like, no, it's still cash. Like cash and credit rule the world. Like that's not going away, right? It's just paper. Whether I Venmo you 20 bucks, you know, we bet 20 bucks on a, uh, you know, a, a Blackhawks uh, Kraken game and Kraken probably lose. So you say, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, maybe next year, but if, uh, if I give you a $20 bill versus if I Venmo you, 20 bucks it's it's the same thing right it's just without the paper it's still cash so. and the and and not the massive late fee like in the blockbuster days <laughs> oh man yeah i uh yeah i i i hear that and i just have a little ptsd my mom getting mad at me about those i think yeah I probably turn not the blockbuster <laughs> we're gonna ground you <laughs> no yep. no vhu yep. movies for a week if you don't yeah. return them <laughs> yeah oh, man that's uh yeah wayne, wayne Heizenga, I bought the dolphins with those late fees and uh, yeah, and, and or the Marlins, maybe it was anyway. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, they're late on their fees, too. It's like, look at them. They collect all late fees and they're still in yeah. last place. And and, do, yeah. and does a new owner. Um, and, and who is it? A Rod or uh, I'm trying to think who who I, owns I the um, Marlins now? Yeah. So it's like, you know, you know, oh, somebody. From, yeah. Or Jeter, Jeter or somebody from the Yankees. I think it was Jeter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Derek Jeter from the Yankees. And uh, J-Lo yeah. made it more and more late. So thank Blockbuster <laughs> yeah. for all that and blame it on late yeah. fees. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a, speaking of, you know, resistance to change, there's actually a wild uh, documentary on how, obviously, when Netflix, Netflix first got to the game, they would mail you CDs, right? I remember and that. And remember that? It was before <laughs> the internet was, the internet was around, you know, but like, you know, kind of in the wake of the, you know, dot com boom, just ever get taken for a ride, you still get your two CDs, send them back, all that. Uh, there's a documentary on how it started going digital and Blockbuster obviously had the major, like, the domination of the market. And they were like, no. We're not, we're not worried about this company that's going digital. Like we make too much money on our late fees. And yeah. there's, there are some executives that were like, no, like this is going to happen. They're going to destroy us. And they're like, no, nah, don't worry about it. Like, obviously they should have worried about it. Um, as we now talk about that, you can imagine there being, 
uh, blockbuster and versus you know, you know it's just crazy so mm-hmm. it's a wild story of like they saw it coming from 100 miles away and they're like no nah, it's fine mm-hmm. you know so uh, it, yeah and is there, is there the only blockbuster left that's somewhere in Washington or something? There's like the there's like the only one blockbuster. I think that's Romania. I think that's somewhere it, in the uh, Pacific Northwest. I, I think it's in Oregon. I, Oregon, uh, that's the name of it. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's uh, and also one thing I found. So I uh, I went to school in uh, Milwaukee. I went to Marquette for a few years, and then I went to Washington State. One thing I didn't growing up here in Seattle, I didn't realize that. Uh, it'd be interesting if you did a, a listener poll of how uh, the state below Washington is pronounced. If it was uh, Oregon or Oregon, <laughs> I, uh, that's one thing I thought. People like, oh, is that down there by uh, by Oregon? I was like, Oregon, but it's taught that in the East Coast. Anyway, I believe it's in Oregon mm-hmm. or or Alaska or Alaska. I I I, I, yeah. I think it was around the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. If it was Alaska, it'd probably be be uh, be uh, shot by about maybe five ten people living in yeah, Italy right. or something. So I don't think anybody hey. want to travel like thousands of miles just yeah. to go to a blockbuster. I don't think they do hey, that. It, you know, they might be a little bummed out. Like, okay, I guess yeah, all right. You know, it was a good time, but obviously now the choice. You know, and to me too, that's that evolution. You think about blockbuster versus Netflix. It's it's uh, it's choice, right? It's access. It's choice, right? Where it's like, okay, with, you know, it's thinking about the the types of payments and going digital, right? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, if, if you're just going cash or checks, it's like, oh, do you have a check? Do you have cash? Oh, no, I got I have to go do this. I have to go do that. Or, and versus, oh, hey, what kind of mechanisms do you want to pay on, with on your phone? It's all integrated. It just gives you access to many more things, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think that's pretty, pretty cool. And there's a lot of things as well, too. And uh, you also spend some time with uh, Avo and uh, Snap Advance. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell us about yeah. your time with that before you, you yeah. uh forming uh, Unionly. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, graduated from Washington State, go in uh, 2008, you know, when the economy was in a great spot, you know, and everything was uh, the housing market had just blown up and no one was hiring. And uh, so I went to work. I actually went to work at a company called Big Fish Games. Uh, doing mm. customer support for the casual games uh, industry uh, at about a three dollar price point uh, for uh, uh, the average customer was generally uh, women uh, seventy and over. Um, so it was very you know, it, which uh, was very interesting to talk to people all over the country at a very cheap uh, price point for the game. So that was good education, <laughs> you, you know. That was that helped help some people there. But uh, and then I went to Avo uh, when it was about thirty people. Uh, it was an online legal marketplace, so you could go ask. Uh, advice and, and get advice from an attorney in hopes of hiring one. I was on the uh, account management and sales side where uh, attorneys would advertise, right? So when I started, like I said, there was 30 people there. I think we had, I don't know, maybe two, 300 clients. Uh, over the course of seven years, that grew from 30 people to about 500. Wow. Uh, we had over 20,000 clients, um, you know, about $90 million in annual recurring revenue, uh, give or take. Uh, so I got to see that. We had a team of uh, 60 or 70 people. Uh, so I got to see that growth, right? All those lessons of growing from, you know, 30 to 500 and seeing that, that kind of reached the point of where it was like, all right, this is cool. But uh, my friends who started a company called SnapRays uh, had started a, a, which was in the high school space. Within that company, there was a company that was called Amplo that became Snap Advance. That was basically a collegiate fundraising, a giving day, you know, big uh, online fundraising campaigns in the collegiate space. They said, hey, we've started this. There's a few people we would think they'd be perfect to come over and kind of help, you know, take this to the next level. So I said, all right, cool, let's do it. So I did that. And that, again, was, uh, you know, if anyone has ever received mail from their alma mater for Giving Day, you know, it's like a big all-in 24-hour campaign where, you know, we worked with, uh, you know, Columbia, Florida, Wisconsin, uh, you know, you, you name it, just across the board raising anywhere from uh, $1 to $25 million in a day. Uh, wow. We build these super intricate high-end websites that were you know, very expensive, very uh, intricate and in connecting the different fundraising campaigns and creating challenges and all that, um, which was cool. When I started there, there was, I think, you know, three or four of us. Uh, we had, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 clients. And over the course of uh, three years, we went to over, I think it was about two or 300 clients. Uh, these are all schools, uh, really team about 15 people. Uh, and we became the largest uh, online uh, fundraising platform in the collegiate space. So, oh cool. my gosh, that's so amazing. And we'll talk about uh, how you got started with uh, Unilea more as well, too, and um, also some of the benefits of it. 
But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson -Zia. available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia molson -Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia molson -Zia, available on Amazon. Check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, Go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books and merchandise and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Also support us on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with uh, Seattle born and raised co-founder of Unilee um, Online at Unilee.io. Here on the Mike Widener Show with Scott Herrick. Scott, um, you, you invent this amazing product, which uh, basically is um, you know designed for unions as well, too. And uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, so we got into the collegiate space and actually that uh, we were kind of starting to, to roll. We uh, got that portion of the company got acquired uh, January of 2020, right? So then we transitioned uh, to the new uh, ownership, which, um, you know, my, my mom said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So uh, here's me not saying anything at all. And uh, that happened. And then in you know March of 2020, uh, yeah, obviously the world ended. And uh, but backing up about two or three years uh, prior, uh, I was approached, introduced uh, by a family uh, friend to the owner of a company called Unions America, the big product Union Active uh, have, is uh, one of the largest, if not the largest uh, provider of websites in the uh, union space. Um, and then he said, hey, what you guys have, we really need uh, to combine with our offerings. And I was like, oh, man. So we started talking, I started looking into it and I was like, oh, this is perfect, right? So, cause what we did at the time was high end, again, you know, very expensive, very intricate, long-term uh, websites and products, but it was very time consuming, very expensive, uh, very intricate. As, and I said, this is perfect to make something that's super simple, you know, basically to complement the product offering, right? To say this is very simple, quick, easy, but still as effective, right? And I put it together and I brought it to the powers of B and they said, no, 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 all right. Okay, you know, we have this pre-built opportunity. Why don't we just, you know, do it? Anyway, uh, it's like just, you know, I'm not one to uh, take no for an answer. If it's, if I know it's mm -hmm. right, it's going to help people, right? Um, and so I kept working on it for about three years. And uh, so then back to the present in that story, uh, March of 2020, uh, everybody got laid off and uh, said, I went to my, the people I've been working on it with and I said, hey, you know, uh, if we can do this on our own, uh, do you still want us to do it? And they're like, oh yeah, absolutely. So I said, all right, cool. So uh, the ne next day, I went over to my buddies who actually built the prior platform uh, at the company who was, you know, independent co contractor at the time. We got to work. So uh, in April, uh, April, April 20th, 2020, we actually were officially formed as a company. So by, by a somewhat happy accident. So for mm -hmm. 2020. <laughs> it, it sounds amazing as well, too. And um, you, you say the unionly.io uh, is for the union. So um, what got you into the ideas of, um, you know, having it for unions? How did that first start when it came to unions? Um, so through a family friend who introduced me to the owner uh, of Unions America, purely, right? Um, he brought it to me and I said, hey, you know, this is pretty cool. I started looking into it and just the, they're really, I mean, they're still... So there's some stuff, but technology that's built specifically for organized labor, there's really not a lot. Um, and for me, it was also like, okay, this is actually an opportunity to help the people that really aren't asking for a lot of help that are just doing the work that makes things run, right? Okay. Um, so it went from, you know, a, a big fish games helping uh, 
the elderly play casual games to uh, Avo, where effectively I help attorney make more attorneys make more money, which was always fun. People would say, oh, "What do you do?" It's I help attorneys <laughs> make more money, and they're like, "Oh, okay." I mean, you know, it's you know, it's whatever. But uh, and into fundraising, and, and then with this, it's like, all right, this because to, to me, I know it's very politicized. There's a lot you could say here and there, but it's like it, it base level. It's like, hey, people are coming together to help each other out to be treated more fairly, to mm. have good conditions, all that. But to me, it's also the people that are doing the jobs that are keeping things running. So to me, it's like, hey, if, and those are the kind of people I, I think, at least in my experience personally, are the ones that are going to ask for the, the least, right? They're just going to mm. do what they got to do and keep it rolling. So I said, hey, if that's a group that I can help them, let's do it, you know? Yeah. Oh, so you also mentioned on the website you have with the um, the IBEW, which is the uh, electrical union, and also like say with um, you know Teamsters, Mill Rights, and um, Labors, and all that. And um, and, and how, how are they adapting to this? Um, you know, the paperless or like the um, with, with um, the online as well too. They've done it mm-hmm. traditionally, like with checks, cash, mm-hmm. and everything like that. Yeah. It's like how 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 long of a change do you think it took like from these um. The, the well-known unions to uh, to tap to yeah. this are they still working yeah. on it or is still like you know yeah. we still like checking cash yeah you know the uh it, it's gotten a lot better the first uh probably three six months i was kind of like you know should i really be doing this this is kind of crazy um one i think what has kept uh unions strong i think people are realizing is they've been really insular right you know not trusting of outside groups which is in general i totally get you know i call you and you don't know me, why the hell should you trust me, right? Totally fair. Um, so I think uh, as we, we've built up trust, I've built up trust and, and we've kind of shown results, that's helped a lot. But I think them seeing other people do it and seeing it's okay, because there's, a, I think there's a, the, the general distrust and, and fear of, of adapting to online payments was stronger when we first started, you know, almost two years ago. Um, I think it's changed as, you know, over the last two years, the rate at which technology is evolving is is insane, right? It's faster than anyone has ever seen before, and it's about to get faster than anyone has ever seen before, for a fact, you know? So it's like, hey, buckle up, you know? So, um, but I think the trust factor for me, which is, uh, to me, is, as a person, I think that's what I kind of believe in above all else. It's like, if you don't have trust, then what do you have? <laughs> you know? Right. So... Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, too. And also that uh, back in 2018, North American businesses processed or $18 trillion in paper checks and cost them like what? $550 billion in delays, labors, mm-hmm. errors, and all that. And yeah. it's like, you know, you know, a, a lot of it is pretty much, you know, with uh, paperless, it's like, you know, all, all this, um, all, all this could be used to, towards like something else. I mean, I would look at mm-hmm. like 18 trillion, like, oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And, and it's interesting how much checks actually cost, right? And I think the biggest thing that, the biggest cost in general that never really gets talked about, people know but don't talk about is time, right? Because no one ever sits down and actually thinks about, well, how do I calculate that, right? But it's like, okay, or or how many new members are you missing out on where if it says, hey, fill out this application, mail it in, you know, download this you know, PDF, fill it out, mail it in, we'll let you know if you're approved or not, send us a check. I mean, you're talking about two, three weeks or something that could have taken five minutes, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and then you're talking about the admins time, you know, chasing people down. Hey, pay your dues, pay your dues. Oh yeah, checks in the mail, checks in the mail, check, you know, like uh, versus that just having it done. Um, so it's, you know, just hundreds, if not thousands of hours of time uh, per client can be saved, which to me is pretty cool, right? Because then you can, you're giving those people time back to, you know, help the organization out or just to spend time with their family and friends. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really good idea too. And uh, why our business has been shifting away from paper checks to um, d- digital ones. So it's like, there's a lot of reasons behind that. Mm-hmm. And it seems to me, like, I think, I mean, I don't quote me on this, but it just seems anecdotally like banks are also kind of saying, Hey, you know, you don't need to order more checks. Like I think just in general, because they're, you know, their shift, there's a shift towards ACH. Right. But just the actual physical check is definitely, kind of i think going to be the first one that's phased out before paper cash mm-hmm. and of course because also, of those costs <laughs> and you also talked about uh cashless and uh paperless as well too so once again just uh, tell us about from your perspective between the difference of between cashless and paperless yeah and i think it's a it's a big it's, a, it's it might seem very small but you look anywhere on the internet and it's very rarely referenced right it's just and i think that's a, to help people's understanding of it uh, back to the original part of our conversation, this is going to happen. It's already well underway and cash is 
or excuse me, paper, paper money is going to go away eventually. Not, I think uh, USA, the US will be last. Like, there's a few co- countries in, in Europe that it's going to happen in the next couple of years um, where paper is going away. I think the biggest fear people will talk about is, oh, it's the government's going to control this and that. Unless there's actually a, a digital currency made, not cryptocurrency, but a, a digital version of the US dollar made, the government still wouldn't have control, right? This is still cash marked as it is now, um, but with just uh, in, in a digital format, right? So um, it's just really going away from paper. It's kind of like uh, you used to get a fax, right? Now you get an email. So mm-hmm. I think to me, just having that understanding to tie in with your question around how are uh, unions and how are people you know, adapting to the change, I think to me, that's a big, while it might seem small, is extremely important to, at large to just say, hey, it's just a piece of paper, right? You know, it's from, you went from, you know, going to Blockbuster to, you know, Netflix, right? You went from, you know, the uh, phone, the rotary phone landline to the cell phone, you went from faxes to, to email, you know, so it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and also, too, the fact that uh, people are worried about um, fraud theft and cyber, um, you, you know, attacks and everything like that with, with your app as well, too. It's like, you know, how, how much uh, how much protection is uh, offered as well, too? And does it also protect, like, say, with, um, you know, cybersecurity threats and also like fraud, stealing of money, currency and everything like that? And, um, and and basically just, you know, just explain, you know, you know, you know, the safety of it as well, too, and especially union sending money and all this, like, hey, where's the dues? You know that. So, you mm-hmm. know, that's, that's yeah. another option, too. It's yeah. like, um, yeah, and I think, too, there's with anything done digitally, you know, there's always that fear, right? There's always those people out there, sure. But at least if there's a digital record of it, the banks can back it up, right? If you have a check, I actually remember, when I was a kid, uh, my uh, dad, someone stole our mail, made a fake ID, and then it was check- they did check fraud. <laughs> and so then I think it was the police showed up and they were like, yes, sir. And someone went to a bunch of Home Depots and tried to write like $10,000 in checks. Oh, my gosh. You know? So, you know, I mean, p- p- humans are humans. People are going to figure out a way to try to, you know, make a buck. And I think the big thing with all that is that all the hackers and major hacks you see that are happen most of the time are are going through old systems are going through old servers through old loopholes um if anything has two-factor authentication you know there's a lot of security measures we put into place especially uh to make sure that does not happen but at least if there's a digital record you you can see that if you do it that does happen unfortunately the banks can get back to you right versus if you're like well hey i swear i had a million dollars in cash in that box right there and i'm like yeah sure you did (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know so um anyway but yeah, and there, there was all, will always be that, but you know, I think in the current age we live in, um, there's always a record of it if you really uh, do get if fraud really does happen to you. Uh, but there's the levels of security now are also better than ever before. That's why we put them into our system to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, but you know, people are out there. <laughs> sure. and, and, and lastly, how does uh, unionly um, how does unionly uh, differ from the uh, from the rest? Uh, we care besides unions. <laughs> we we care. Um, yeah, no, it's easy. It's, it's extremely easy to set up. Um, we, our team is also very heavily invested in the success of our clients. Right. You know, I said kind of jokingly, uh, but we actually really believe in the success of our, our clients and, uh, are constantly building the product for them. Uh, and also basically we've taken about 10 parts of the whole equation it takes to build an online payments network. Uh, and it takes about five, 10 minutes to get set up. So where it used to take, you know, months and maybe ten hundred thousand dollars to set up super intricate intricate setup uh, now it takes about five ten minutes and it's completely custom and, and they have complete control so and that it's is extremely and, and we have an option where it can actually be completely free for the organization wow. so wow, that, that's very amazing i seem to like that and um and, and where can people get more information about uh unily.io yeah like you just said unily.io io is our main site go there my, my email is uh, scott at unily.io if you ever want to reach out to me any questions you want to talk? I'm around. That sounds that sounds very good. And what what and what uh, what can we expect from uh, Scott Herrick of Unily um, in 2022 and uh, more? We'll find out yeah. just one minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Moses of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the co-founder of uh, Unily, Scott Herrick, after this timeout.
We're back with the co-founder of Unilee.io, Scott Herrick here on the Mike Widener Show, born and uh, raised in Seattle as well, too. And, Scott, I, I, it was just a great app, and I'm looking to uh, download as well, too. And um, I forgot to ask you, do you have to join a union in order to, um, to be with uh, Unilee.io? No, I mean, that's what it's built for. We also have a nonprofit arm uh, side of the company that can be used as well. I mean, you mentioned you have a, a PayPal button on your side, don't it, through there. We can even help you get set up, right? Where it's the same kind of function, except it's built into a, a network where you could go and create individual pages, different kinds of payments, uh, there's different functionality. Um, you know, it's kind of taking just having a PayPal button one step further, several steps further. Uh, but anybody really that has an organization, uh, we can we can help. We certainly will do so. We'll keep that in mind. And what can we expect from you guys in 2022 and beyond, Scott? Yeah, I think the name of the game is uh, is, is streamlining processes, right? Just really automating uh, things to the point of where, you know, where an admin person can really do the work of more people, right? So as it works smarter, not harder, um, you know, we're looking to roll out some things on that front to really just take all the tasks and uh, streamline everything so that everybody can uh, have more time themselves. That's certainly a great idea and looking forward to it, Scott. And who do you consider biggest influence in a career? Oh man. Um, biggest influence in my career, Pro- probably my mom, you know, actually. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. Like we were talking about earlier. She grew up in, or she, I was raised in the, the media world and uh, you know, she just always kept going. My dad too, but they both kept, uh, you know, just always going and always working harder and just kind of always saying, yeah, what, what else you got? What, what, like, you know, that, that drive, you know, that, um, that work ethic and that, that drive, right. To just say, Hey, you know, uh, you know, tr- and showing that trust is earned, right. Um, you know, respect is earned, you know, so um, that's, those are two big things I take in my, uh, with me every day. Right. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's that work ethic and kind of what are you creating and how are you helping people? And uh, yeah, they really, really showed that to me. So um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a very good point as well, too. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, listen, listen more than you talk. Actually, listen. Mm-hmm. I think that's and, a and, yeah. yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good one, too. <laughs> very important indeed. Once again, we're with the uh, co founder of Unily.io, Scott Herrick, here on the Mike Wagner Show. Scott, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2022 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh, check out or get more information on Unionly? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's been great. Great talking to you. Uh, yeah, again, it's uh, unionly.io. Uh, and my email is scott at unionly.io. And uh, check it out. Uh, you know, send me an email and uh, we have a lot coming up in the new year. We're certainly looking forward to it, Scott. Once again, a very big thank you for your time. You've been totally amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. And we're looking forward to having you on. We wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.